The Bardedon is a Bard and Paladin multiclass in Baldur's Gate 3. It excels with any weapon type, making it a fantastic choice to play through the game. Finesse weapons, versatile, two-handers, shield, ranged are all viable with this build, and you'll have a high strength and dexterity allowing you to swap freely without using a respec. This combo also greatly alleviates the biggest flaw paladins usually have, and that's mobility. You'll have access to teleports, the athlete feat for better jumping ability, and flourish, which is very handy given your high chance to hit with ranged weapons. So if you're looking for an exciting and fun paladin that doesn't spend each turn inching along without dealing damage, give this build a try. At level 1, we'll select the Paladin class, and at that point we'll be able to select our subclass as well. We will gain a couple of actions here, but since we're only going two levels into Paladin, our Lay on Hands will never get super strong, and Divine Sense will give advantage on attack rolls against Celestials, Fiends, and Undead. This does have some use, but in general, we'll probably make use of other abilities or other bonus actions. For the subclass, again, since we're only going to level 2, it doesn't have a huge influence. I do think that Oath of Vengeance is the best out of the three choices for those two levels. You get access to Inquisitor's Might. You or an ally's weapon attack deal an additional three radiant damage and can potentially daze the enemy. It's bonus action, like I said, so you could cast this and then attack with a two-handed weapon. Again, probably the best of the three subclasses there, but ultimately it really doesn't make much of a difference here. For ability scores, we'll put Strength at 17, and we'll be buffing this to 18 as soon as we get our first feat. We'll be selecting the Athlete feat, which is going to increase our jump distance, and mobility is one of the biggest problems that this build has, so that's a very nice feat to pick up when we get the opportunity, and you can jump and still use a regular action, allowing you to still continue to deal damage or do something else on your turn like cast a spell. Dexterity will tank all the way to 8. Now, we're not going to ignore this, because we're going to be picking up the Gloves of Dexterity, which are available in Act 1, and if you're respecting Minthara for this build, you'll have those before you even acquire her, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue there. You can find them from the Quartermaster within the Githyanki Crash for anybody who's unaware. Constitution at 14, this is going to give us some additional hit points since we'll be on the front lines with this character, as well as give us a little bit improved saving throws in that regard. We'll drop our Intellect because we're going to need the points from somewhere. Wisdom will leave at 10 because we've got enough points at this point and we can leave this neutral, and I find that Wisdom is preferred saving throw between Intellect and Wisdom. Charisma to 16. This is going to be a main stat and important to us, and this character will be more than capable of being the character you choose for dialogues for that. For proficiencies, we'll take athletics. That's because, again, we'll be in the front lines and we'll make sure that we stay on our feet. And intimidation, because it's the only one we have access to that uses our charisma. Level 2, we'll gain access to Divine Smite, a fighting style, and some additional spells we can prepare. For the fighting style, I would recommend Defense. This can give us a plus 1 bonus to armor class while wearing armor, which... This character will be wearing armor at all times. On top of that, this gives us the option to use dual wield weapons, whether it's dexterity for finesse, versatile weapon like longsword and a shield, or two-handed weapons like a great axe. So you have an incredible amount of weapons you can wield with this build, and since your strength and dex will both be at 18 relatively early, you can basically just use whatever the best weapons you have available to you are. For prepared spells, I like to take command and this is really just the best of what will be remaining after we take the other four spells. Bless, which is going to have incredible use. You can bless up to three creatures, gaining an additional 1d4 to attack rolls and saving throws. Very handy for many types of characters. And then we're going to take all the smites. We're going to take Searing Smite for potentially dealing fire damage, Wrathful Smite for psychic damage, and Thunderous Smite for thunder damage. Now there are some other effects that these can cause, like pushing your target away or potentially frightening a target and setting them on fire. So you can make use of these, and if a target is more vulnerable to one effect over another, then certainly you want to use these as opposed to your regular Divine Smite. At level 3, we'll put our first level into the Bard class, and we'll be going Bard from here forward all the way up to level 12. This first level will give us access to some cantrips. Personally, I find Vicious Mockery as well as Blade Ward the most useful. None of these going to have a huge impact if you are doing this on a different character you may want something like light just giving you increased chance to hit if targets are in the shadows however ultimately up to you here for spells healing ward very powerful i always mention this in any build guide video i do that has access to this 18 meter range as a bonus action allowing you to pick other party members up and once you play through the game a couple of times it's not so reliant on healing your party members in combat it's more so doing afterwards or just picking them up Longstrider and Featherfall are for the same reason. These are actually ritual spells, so they're not going to use a spell slot when you cast them. You can do so outside of combat. Longstrider will persist throughout the day. Featherfall can be recast as needed. 
And lastly, we'll take Dissonant Whispers. This will be the least used of them. It has the potential to frighten a creature. They have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls, and also they cannot move. Nice for immobilizing a character that may be on another party member. So this character itself is pretty tanky, but if you have a hard-hitting melee user on one of your ranged, then you may want to cast a spell. But ultimately, we really want to be conserving our spell slots for additional smites. And that's the reason why Longstrider and Featherfall are such good pickups. First starting instrument for this particular character, I went with the Lyre, just happens to do with some of her backstory and abilities for skill proficiencies. Ultimately, you can choose whichever one you like. I would recommend not choosing acrobatics since your athletics is already higher. You could go and slide a hand, especially using gloves of dexterity. However, I went with performance just to kind of play into that Lyre that she comes with by default. Level four, we'll gain Song of Rest. This is very useful. It basically gives you an additional short rest, so very good means of healing your party outside of combat. Make sure that you're taking advantage of that when possible. We'll also gain another spell here. I like to take Thunder Wave. This is going to give us an AOE ability of knocking them back. As a bard, we will be able to knock the targets back with flourishes, but this will allow us to do it to multiple enemies. Won't see much use with this, again, because we're just always trying to conserve spell slots for our smites, but you may potentially use this. Fairy Fire is also a good pickup. However, as a drow, you'll have that by default, so that's the reason why I didn't pick this up here. Level 5, we'll put a third level into Bard. This will give us a second level spell, a subclass, as well as a fighting style. For the spell here, I like to take Hold Person, and the reason for this is because it's really going to play into us being a melee character. We can hold an enemy still. They'll always receive critical hits from anything within 3 meters. This is also an action, so if you're dual wielding, you could cast a spell and then follow up with an offhand attack and have a critical hit, at which point you can also then apply the Divine Smite as a reaction, dealing lots of damage even with that single offhand attack. For a subclass, we'll take College of Swords, and this will level the playing field a little bit compared to classes that are five levels in Martial, gaining their extra attack at this point. We won't gain an extra attack until level six as a Bard, which is gonna be another three levels or level eight. So having the flourishes here and, and having the ability to attack two different enemies in a single turn is very nice. Just furthering the damage that we can do. But ultimately, if you wanna just start the character level one to five as a fighter paladin or anything that would get two attacks and then respec as you get higher level that's an option as well in the case of acquiring minthara and respecing her for this build you may be close to level eight anyways or perhaps a couple levels shy which you'll get rather quickly at this point in the story so you'll probably have access to all this anyways but just something to keep in mind if you're building this character from level one for fighting style here we're going to select two weapon fighting when you make an attack with your offhand weapon, you can add your ability modifier to the damage of the attack. Like I said, this is going to be able to use pretty much any weapon that you pick up in the game, allowing you to just always use the best weapons that you have access to. So two weapon fighting is a great choice here. Character level six will gain a cantrip, a spell, and a feat. For the cantrip, you could select friends if you were playing on balanced or even the story mode. This is not great on Tactician unless you're just looking for a quirky playthrough, at which case it doesn't really much matter which one you take. Light is probably the best choice after that, in my opinion. For spells, I like to pick up Cloud of Daggers at this point. This is going to give us some AOE attacks. And again, we do want to conserve our spell slots. And one of the best advantages of this character is taking out single targets. You can take out incredibly strong single targets with this build. So you're not always looking to deal AOE damage. But there are inevitably situations where you might want to utilize a choke point and put this character in front of that. So you will make use of this spell throughout the course of the playthrough, and the majority of the other ones you would not. For a feat, we're going to take Athlete, and we're going to bump our strength to 18. The main reason for this is to increase our jump distance. Like I said, this class will lack mobility, and that's kind of true for any Paladin build, so this is very nice. Now, Bard does have a flourish, whether it's melee or range, that will allow us to teleport to another character, and we can take advantage of that as well and follow up in dealing massive damage if it's a target we can't get on. However, the jump will certainly be used as well. Level 7, we'll continue going into Bard as mentioned. We'll get access to a third level spell here. I like Glyph of Warding. It will give you AoE damage, but on top of that, you can select which school or type of element to damage you want to deal. So this is nice, just giving you a variety of damage you could deal to targets that might be vulnerable. Another good option here is plant growth, and if you have the access to the Ring of Free Action, which is available when you pick up Minthara as well, from the Drow in the Tower, this is another good choice. You can cast plant growth and then walk around it freely while everything else is reduced movement speed. So something that you can keep in mind if you want to go for a type of build like that. Level 8. 
we'll go ahead and just select another spell, which I like to take plant growth because I didn't take it previously and as mentioned for all the same reasons. Level 9 will give us access to level 4 spells. I like to take Dimension Door here, and this will teleport yourself and one adjacent ally. Now you can teleport just yourself. You don't have to do somebody else. So it just adds to our mobility, and if there's a party member that's in trouble or an ally that you might have in that encounter, you can just remove them from the situation and bring them to safety. So very useful, and like I said, otherwise you would just be using this for a smite. For levels 10 to 12, we'll continue along as a bard putting our next feat into ability improvement to buff our strength. That's if we're using a two-handed weapon or versatile option with shield. Alternatively, we could start with 16 strength and use two feats, athlete and heavy armor master, to boost it to 18, while gaining additional ability to jump and reduce our damage taken. Keep in mind with this build, we could also leave strength at 10 when creating our character, and dual wield finesse weapons, boosting our dexterity up at level one, while also having a solid chance to hit from range. Eventually, when all the characters are max level, and equipment has been dispersed amongst them, you may want to respect to fine-tune your ability scores for the most ideal option based on what you're using. This character is extremely versatile, so keep that in mind as you play through the game. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.